This is Chair, I'm your host Nemanja. And let's first go back to previous week episode with Ivan from M Brain Train. To uh, reliably observe physiological data, to record physiological data from the human body, regardless of the type of data, uh, you had to have some setups that were more medical than anything else. It, it turned out uh, that uh, a number of questions could not be addressed at all. So, for instance, one, uh, one major thing uh, that could not be addressed is how we interact in, in social occasions. Uh, we are surrounded by all kinds of things that, uh, that have some kind of measure of our behavior, starting with your phone. What these uh, systems lack is uh, is directly how your brain responds to such things. We can map your behavior, but we cannot map your uh, responses. So for these things, you have to measure uh, brain directly, and you have to do it at the moment when something happens, not after that, because of the brain bias, of the recall bias that that uh, that I spoke about. So that's, that's what I think, and I think that we are going to start seeing these variables uh, come today or in maybe five years, maybe even less. This is Chair, place where we discuss innovations. Today we have a guest with a strong belief that everything is produced with our creative mind it has to do with ensuring quality of life. For example, imagine traveling from one part of the city to another in no time. Thanks to AI, our guest Udo Eichlinger is on the verge of such a breakthrough. Udo is CEO at Siemens Serbia, Siemens Mobility, and he is the president of German-Serbian Chamber of Commerce. And uh, apart from being a successful leader and business innovator in a company that is more than 130 years old, he's a people's person. So, Udo, welcome to Chair. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Um, we are going to talk about innovations here today, and especially the, in, the, in terms of innovations in traffic. But first, I want to ask you, uh, and I think you're the great, great guy to ask you this question. Um, what, it, what is the key to becoming a great leader? Oh, I think that that's really a multi multi uh, view uh, necessary a bit on that. Um, I think you are you are not a natural born leader. I think through expertise that you have from your business point, from your studies, or from your your business you went through, you're taking away some elements out of that. Additionally, you need to be, from my point of view, a good listener. You need to listen to people. You have to have empathy for people in order to understand their needs and their demands, right? So listening, I think, is, is a very, very uh, prominent element in, in that to anticipate what would be the next step and what would be the, the, the rational to go forward with a client or with a colleague, for example. And that could uh, be a, a kind of foundation uh, so on one side, the competences you have been gaining throughout many years, and on the other side, the experience you have made in various situations with your colleagues, you took always something out. I think experience is a very, very um, uh, 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 important element in that as well. So uh, to be a good leader means also to, to pull people and not to push people. Right, so we are not. We are not. Uh, we cannot stand in front of people and say, "Okay, you go now in that direction, five thousand meter, and people will just blindly turn around and run five thousand meters." Like that. that doesn't work anymore like that. So, if I'm saying maybe, look, guys, I think it's beneficial to run five thousand meter with me and let me start in the front, and I'm, please come with me, something like that. That makes you at least a kind of person who is under today's understanding of, of management and uh, uh, leadership, a, a person who could become a, a leader. Another element, and then I'm maybe closing that uh, answer <laughs> to that question, is uh, you have to find a way how to influence and how to win people, to get a buy-in of people, to create a growth mindset that everything is possible, that there is no limits in business, that there is a kind of spirit inside of people 
to, to create a, a motivation they already have to sharpen that motivation and to bring people into behind an idea and to behind a high value and high perform, performance uh, culture, for example. So only if you have that implemented, you can win really and get to heights higher than ever planned, for example. So uh, that doesn't make you still a good leader. I think that that a mix out of that and a situational intelligence and emotional intelligence is is a is a is a, a very much profound element you have to have too so and that uh, all around the circle that makes you maybe a good leader and there is not so many of them i would say i will follow up on the on this uh, uh, you you mentioned growth mindset and uh, uh, i want to uh, touch a bit with uh, with the cultural stuff you're from Germany, and uh, uh, you're now here in Serbia for more than five years. Um, how you are, and we can see that you're a great, great leader throughout your career and what you accomplished. Uh, how was it hard to, to work with a different mentality? Mm, look, first and utmost, um, I think you, you need to prepare for a task. That is one thing. So um, uh, companies who send people somewhere in a different uh, cultural environment, name it, is it Asia, is it Asia Pacific, or is it uh, Far East or, or, or Middle East, or is it uh, Central Eastern Europe, uh, need to know that uh, you have to prepare your people for that cultural environment. Did it happen in my case? No, <laughs> not at all. But the thing is, um, you... you have to have, uh, let's say, uh, a kind of open mindset for a change, right? So if you are not open for a change, you would possibly not even changing a country. You would stay in secure Germany. You would you would not uh, be willing to move your your with your with your pack of family from one place to another, putting them into uncertainty. Even. So I think you need a kind of uh, a basic, a basic willingness of change, really to to enjoy change, to enjoy uncertainty, and to go for, uh, actively go for that. I mean, I remember, I remember one one uh, story when we went to China, when we, we, the whole family went to China, and I needed a telephone. I needed a telephone, a fixed phone at home. You have to have that if you have a renting contract. You need a fixed phone there. And I didn't even know what to do because I could not read the language. I could not see the signs. So I had to ask myself through. And it took me, I think, one and a half weeks with some support even of some people to, to get through this. And when I had finally my phone, it was even not, not making any... So I still had to activate it. So... Different countries, different cultures, different challenges, and you have to love that. Otherwise, you would not do that uh, constant on a constant basis to jump from one duty to another, right? So, um, and the experience out of that, not the telephone story, but the experience out of many, many countries gives you a wide range of situations you pass through. And you, you, you find many, many similarities even in, 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 in something. But every country has also its very much specific. So. Yeah, specific culture and specific yes. needs. Yes. Uh, so let's move to, to our subject. And it's very interesting. Uh, since Siemens as a company is working uh, throughout the world with different uh, huge cities. Um, and uh, the problem that you are solving, a uh, lot of problems that you are solving, one of them is uh, around the transport and the transportation system. And uh, before we uh, tap into that, uh, I want to hear from your perspective, uh, where does Belgrade stand uh, with innovation and uh, what is your vision for this uh, growing metropolis? Okay, innovations is a, is a, a everything, everything what we do actually is innovation. I think that Siemens stands really for innovation. You mentioned 135 years. And there is, in these 135 years, we did, I, I would say, we did really groundbreaking things. However, nothing is as old as the success of yesterday. Exactly. So, but we took, we took so many, we took so many, uh, so many 
so much expertise out of different kind of verticals, different kind of industries into our DNA, that innovation is a kind of, or a part even of our DNA. Have you been knowing that um, 2018, on a daily basis, Siemens applied with the European patent uh, authorities 33 patents per day, which means this is a significant amount of, of, of new inventions and innovations per day. And Siemens is one of the leading companies in, in uh, that, uh, that ever since. However, that's like 10,000 10, a year or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. And, and uh, even, even we don't know, as a colleagues, we don't know what Siemens actually knows. So it is, a, and you have to embrace this culture of, of, of uh, really uh, forming people to think out of the box, to uh, innovate, and it comes from innovation, right? So, so you need to innovate a, an, an existing uh, element of the life in order to make it a scalable business at the end of the day, which has certain impact also on society. Back to your question where we stand in, in the Belgrade, I, I would say that uh, if you drive through Belgrade, you have many, many things uh, improving. Is that uh, is that uh, the, the 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 government uh, uh, e government for example? And I think a good example is this uh, management of the the, the COVID crisis, uh, this application, which uh, vaccination you can get, and all this stuff. This process is really working. It's really working. Yeah, it's remarkable. I, I, it's remarkably working, and it's way better working than uh, than in my home country actually. Uh, and can now you say I can actually that. <laughs> yes, I guess I say that because because <laughs> really I, I need I need to say many countries are are more far in 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 that kind of developments of digitalization. So, uh, but coming back to Belgrade, uh, if you if you pass through Belgrade, so there's a lot of news. There's a lot of new buildings, a lot of new services. There's a lot of a lot of new new uh, things for citizens to attract them and to make their life easier, right? So. That, 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 that's one thing. And there the government actually makes pretty, from my perception, a pretty good job compared to other uh, cities. Uh, when it comes to the real business and the real uh, practical things, um, we still have uh, congestion, uh, traffic jams. We have terrible commuting times. We have pollution in the city, which makes me deciding against the city to live in. So I'm living on the other side of the river. Actually, I would love to live on, on, on the, on, in the old town. I love old towns, so it's, it's really wonderful. If the congestion would be and the pollution would be less, I think it would attract more people to come to the city, city, city in the city. From my point of view, a rich country is not a, a country where poor people driving cars. A rich country is where the rich uh, guys uh, uh, commuting with public transportation. Exactly. Okay. So if you look at Switzerland, many many people commute there, having having significant amount of money, but using that as as a as a as a relaxed time in the morning to read the newspaper and commute from A to B. So in that status, we have to we have to achieve in Belgium as well, and there is enough programs. Uh, initiated uh, and many, many good steps forward initiated. Concretely, what we are doing for the city of Belgrade is that that if you commute, for instance, from Panchevo to New Belgrade, uh, uh, now you could go the, the, the Zemon Bridge, but imagine you don't have this bridge anymore. Uh, you don't have this bridge, for example. You would go through the whole city in the morning in the traffic jams, and when it's raining, then you know what is happening in, in yeah. Belgrade. So you you need at least an hour from the Panchevo towards uh, uh, towards New Belgrade. On the lucky day. Yeah, on the lucky <laughs> day. Uh, even no rain, even sunshine, I would say. No, uh, 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 but indeed, we are reducing with a innovation with one of the utmost, one of the utmost modern traffic management system, which is a state of the art applied in this region and even on international basis with artificial intelligence based on algorithms to find the best switching, the best uh, uh, phases, uh, how to route the amount of traffic in that very moment throughout the city. So drastically reducing commuting times, 
drastically reducing congestion because the, the, the engines are running less through the city in time. And of course, it makes the people, it reduces stress levels of the citizens. You have less people getting sick. You having, so everything is impacting of this system is literally impacting the society. It, you know, if you see the macroeconomic harm of a traffic jam, that is really significant. And this is really perfectly addressed with the, together with the city and the experts of the Secretariat for Traffic, with our expert where we are working out what is the best for the city, the Trump priority, the VIP priority, so to switch, the, to, to have the phases shortly. And you will see, if you go regular through the city, uh, Stop the time you are having on Kralia Alexandra right now and how you have it the next day or the, 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 week, the week after. And it will be always a different kind of waiting time you have because the traffic is really adopted by artificial intelligence and by so-called motion zones. So that's, that's where we are with innovation in that particular thing. And you have it, of course, also in the in the in the field uh, of, of of medical and healthcare, uh, where where significant improvement done, also on the on the on the on the uh, let's say medical side on the on the um, uh, doctor side, where they have to make uh, it now in COVID times 20, 30 appointments per day, where they have to diagnose patients precisely and so on and so on, uh, in in a in an amount of time. And you can do that with artificial intelligence in a, in a brink of a second. And keeping doctors on the treatment side of the patients. So what is important in, in that process? That the patient feels very really well, right? Yeah. That the patient is treated in a, in a good way. That the patient is fast out. That he you know, is not spending too much time waiting and all this stuff. That is important for society. So if you can have a machine doing that job, more precise, faster, cheaper. You can utilize your doctors, this human kind, this human piece of the element in that process, the important part from my point of view, you can shift them to exactly that part. And that is changing the, 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 our life drastically in the coming years. You, you mentioned earlier a number of, of patents that uh, you, as a company, uh, were doing in the European Union in 2018. Um, it's uh, it's incredible number. And uh, by that number, how you make the decision uh, in a huge company like that, how you make decision in, uh, in which direction with innovation you're going to go? When generally there is, uh, of course, a lot of um, in, in organisms like Siemens, you 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 have, of course, um, um, uh, people sitting on central technology. For example, they see mega trends in the world. They see in which area um, uh, we have existing existing issues, and uh, uh, those people, those people, and not only those people, also many many people on the planet are thinking about disruptions of things which are existing today and uh, how to do it in a smarter, in a faster and more efficient way. So that leads to a situation that companies in a sudden producing today dust cleaners and tomorrow with the with the, with the, uh, uh, with the, with the artificial intelligence and the uh, elements of industry for zero they are producing in a sudden cars e cars yeah so uh, for example one 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 example how you can impact with such a such a technology um, uh, there is a there is a Solomon company Solomon company they're producing shoes sport shoes f- even for armies for out for outdoor and and so on such as shoes are produced in one minute today, from the beginning to the finished product in one minute. So reducing the dr- drastically the time of production, this is one thing, but also pre-production phase is cut to a fraction of the time uh, of the time we used to uh, do the, the R and D and the, the development of the products. So with modern means of technology and modern instruments and tools of technology today, where our kids, where our grandkids will work with, 
and even we are working with already, that will change our whole life cycle, our whole product life cycle. And, and of course, also the way how we bring products to a market. Yeah, that is just, 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 I, I think we, we have uh, even also in Adidas, right? We have this, those, those um, you know, partnership with Adidas. You can, you can produce a sneaker, a sneaker today within minutes, uh, according to your needs. And you click and configure it on the internet and you click uh, send and the, the, the sneaker falls out in three minutes in Erlangen in the production of Adidas. So, it, so this everything, this process is very, very much shortened, right? So the middle men and the middle people involved in this process are not existing anymore. Right? So, so that is a huge, huge change, right? Uh, uh, it's interesting story about the shoes, but as somebody who is driving in Belgrade, I want to go back to the traffic question Please. and and um, ask you uh, additionally: what uh, at this point, uh, what are your biggest challenges in I- implementing this AI traffic operator system? Well, look, uh, um, uh, utmost utmost importance, of course, that you're not hindering the traffic to flow. Right, so you need really to align all kind of all kind of um, activities on the street. You have to make sure that it's safe for the people, yeah? safe for our stuff, safe for the secretary of traffic, for the people who are really working on the ground. You are operating on an open heart, actually. So you have to, you have of course uh, some process in place. How you agree with the secretary, the police is engaged. Uh, all these kind of things are somehow um, uh, are, are necessary to to or buying time, buying certain time. So in the beginning it took a bit longer, and now we have already implemented, I think, a 90 crossroads in Belgrade, nine zero crossroads so since one year. Um, uh, which are now running already in this mode, and we are having we are faster and faster and faster. So uh, altogether, we have 320 something crossroads in this process or in this project. And um, uh, but if you ask me, what is the the biggest challenge? Is um, you have to educate and to inform citizens about the change, why we are doing this. There is there might be even a small traffic jam, right? Because we are hanging these new lanterns, which is one watt solution, for example. For the, for the time being, it was a 30 or 40 watt solution, one traffic light, and you have thousands and thousands of this in the city. And now it has just one watt, one watt. You are saving electricity. So this, this trend goes more into, into, in, into, into that sustainable things. And the, the challenge is also to, to educate the people. Listen, uh, guys, if, if, if there is a longer waiting time, it has a reason for that short period of time why you have that, because then it goes way faster after that, right? So uh, uh, to educate the people or to inform the people uh, not to get impatient, because such an innovation leads also to certain certain adoption time. Right, you need to adopt in, in a way to new technologies, and that's that's the main that's the main I would say the main the main hurdle sometimes because people are more and more impatient, right? So I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait with a doctor. I don't want to wait in the traffic. I, for me, it's stress. I have the next appointment then and then, and if I cannot reach it, I'm getting getting angry. It's a human 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 kind of thing, and that that might even stand very often in the way of innovation as well. Oh, I don't want this change because it is, you know, I don't need a smartphone and stuff like that. And everybody has it today. And it's a completely new way of, what means completely new? It's it's since 15 years, 20 years, an element of our daily, daily use. And we are ordering our food, Our par- we, we are communicating with our partners. We are finding our partners even on the internet who have, would have thought that, that you will have matchmakers uh, in the internet 15 years ago. <laughs> And now it's a you know, industry and now for it's itself. completely completely normal to find the the partner on Tinder or other uh, platforms. Yeah, and so so that 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 stands a bit for me not important and not and I would never do it. However, uh, you know our kids and, and grandkids they are they are they are getting used. They are digital natives. They are going going very easy for that. 
So I think uh, our capacity, our brain capacity and our willingness to change uh, is, is, is very often the, the, the point of, of, we did that 20 years in the same way, so why to change now? I think yeah. own habits, that's, that's, that's sometimes the, the element of, of blocking things. So uh, uh, we talked about this and what are you doing uh, about the, uh, with the traffic and uh, what are the improvements. But what is about this? Uh, uh, what's next? Um, you mean you mean how it comes to the decisions of, yeah. of such an investment, yeah. which is significant, right? Um, look, there 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 is there, there need to be a strategy in place, right? So every city needs to have a plan a budget process and this is existing of course okay this year we have to invest into public transportation we need to buy buses trams uh, whatever trolley buses and so on and so on but uh, if you if you see how it's literally done uh, in, in 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 means of the uh, the siemens way is that we developed a a platform actually a, a service as a, a platform for cities which is used by many many international cities like uh, Copenhagen Paris Vienna um, um, Munich I think Belgrade actually so we are uh, in the good company <laughs> so we yes 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 and and honestly speaking uh, this this solution set which we donated once to the city of Belgrade for some period of time to use um, Uh, gives you the opportunity as city to implement or to put in your planned investments uh, and to benchmark those different kind of investments uh, against each other in means of the outcome. So if you invest into a metro project, it has different outcomes in means of employment, in means of CO2 reduction, in means of uh, life quality in the city, then, for instance, if you invest into buses, okay? And how you decide, how you decide, mm, I'm, am I investing now into new trams or investing now more into a, uh, more in trolley buses or new bus lines or, or something? A new bridge like, or something. Or uh, the metro, or new bridge, or, or, and so on and so on. And this software, which is based also on, on certain algorithms and many, many data from other cities, benchmark, the city of Belgrade have the chance in benchmarking their possible investments against other cities and to see the impact in CO2 reduction and the increasement of life quality and jobs created with this investment and that the city of Belgrade has. So, uh, meaning uh, you can actually derive your strategy out of that, what I was talking about. So you need a strategy to manage a city. And if I would be, if I would be the, the decision maker in, 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 in the city of Belgrade, luckily I'm not, uh, because it's a very responsible job. However, um, I, I, my target would be to, to create the city, the city of the future uh, by, by really coming back to that phrase, a rich country is not where the poor driving a car. The rich country is where the rich driving public transportation. I would literally invest a lot of in this kind of area. So I, I'm not a specialist now for metros or, 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 or other means of, of Um, uh, commuting in, in, in this particular city because every city has its specific needs. However, I think that we are able to advise and that we uh, give uh, that our advices are heard by the city and that is a good thing, right? So, so there is many, many, many voices in the market, but if, if there is an advisory voice as well, you can do A, B or C and this is the impact out of that you know to whom to listen, right? Anyway. So, um, I always like to, to finish the, the episode with future question. Uh, but let's go with the twist. We, thought with, uh, we talked about AI, how you're using AI in leveraging the traffic issues, and now you told me this example of how you're using it to, to get much bigger insights of the cities and how they're uh, doing and what they should do. Um, but uh, how is your opinion, what is your opinion on the negative aspects of AI? Um, okay, th this is in a way 
the the eternal question machine versus humankind yeah human human uh, we're going a bit in the realm of into, philosophy we are going a bit into into <laughs> what was that movie about um, yeah terminator okay right? yeah this terminator thing um uh, look how far artificial intelligence is is a a a plus for us giving us uh, advantages for humankind in means of medical in, in in all kind of areas improvement of our situations and how far can artificial intelligence become a threat to humankind and indeed that is the 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 uh, val uh, absolute valid question uh, artificial intelligence can be extremely dangerous because it's a self-learning self-multiplying self-sustaining system so you don't have it mandatory under control right you cannot just say okay i'm using the positive element and forgetting the negative elements if you once start that you are in a in a process you can possibly not stop anymore so we are we are dealing good uh, with artificial intelligence if we really choose wisely what is the area where we have utmost uh, or where we utmost addressing the problems of humankind hunger in the world how to cultivate things how to avoid wars how to make uh, a product better faster cheaper more affordable and not not just um, out into the market and thrown away in two years as a, as a consumer. So adopt our need for consumption, not to buy everything what we might think we need, but to get a, a, a condensed, a condensed uh, opinion and a, a, an informed decision-making on things we would like to achieve with such a technology. So, uh, as every knife can be used as a, as a, as a, in, in a, uh, you can use it to, to prepare your bread for your child in the morning the and you can, you can stab someone on the street. So, um, no, uh, normal human beings would not use it for that second thing, but it can be used. And artificial intelligence has that potential as well, because it is not controllable in in to full extent it's way more capacity than human human beings ever ever will develop so the thing is it is something what will develop possibly even a resistance to be switched off by someone which is a human humankind or a human human being so that's that the, this resistance we we have to we have to analyze and to face that that can can happen and if we are doing that a responsible use of such a technology is mandatory and it needs to be decided on a on a higher level than just a, a kind of developers uh, um, uh, uh, will yeah so that's on that um, I'm a friend of modern technologies but uh, Responsible, a responsible use of, of that technology is absolutely crucial for me. Udo, thank you so much for this conversation and I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, for you out there, uh, subscribe and uh, see you next Thursday when we talk about some new other new innovations. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Bye.